Opposed? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> A little bit loud. Oh. New microphone and everything. What in the world I'll do today? I need to get it away from me a little bit, though. Yeah, maybe that'll be better. Is that better? Can you hear? I still get this ringing. Plenty loud, yeah. Jeff's working on it. <laughs> Try it again. How about that? Is that better? All right, good. Okay, well, I'm uh, sorry you got to put up with me on Sunday also. Wednesday night, I know, is enough for you, but uh, Chris, good to see you. Good to have you. Um, do we have anybody else kind of, we don't call him a visitor, but he sneaks in with us every now and then. Uh, yeah, I kind of hated for you to have to put up with me twice a week, but Mark's got the flu, in case you didn't know. Rabbits never did really tell, I don't think. He and two of his boys have the flu. So, at least that's what, uh, yeah. That's what the rumor is, straight from Kyla. So, so they're, uh, they're kind of under the weather right now. So I, I know Mark, uh, I think Travis had left it that Mark had had a rough week, and I think he had, but I think it was because of the flu, and that stuff will get you down, and uh, a couple of the boys, the boys have got it too, and so he called me Friday, I guess, and said he needed some relief for today, and so we'll do the best we can, we'll, we'll have a good time, talk about some things, and and Mark will be back hopefully next Sunday, ready to go. Travis uh, accused me of making the crappie beds. I wouldn't mind having some, though. <laughs> if anybody's got anything they want to throw away or anything, why? Well, take a few of those. Yeah, we could just get those. Jeff, you a crappie fisherman? Yeah, we could. If, they, if those come up missing, what can I say? <laughs> What can I say? Yeah, yeah. I, Billy said he had made some just like those, so I guess <coughs> better watch him. Well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get started. Always good to have a little time to enjoy before we begin. Any announcements or anything this class needs to make before we start? Okay, nephew in Mayfield. Okay, name? Lyndon Henderson. Henderson. Okay, all right. All right, Marilyn? Yeah, Pat kind of had a little 
nasty, what did it fall? What, yeah, nasty fall. And uh, so it would be nice to uh, send her something, yeah. Send her a card. Anything else? It'd help us remind each other. All right, let's have a prayer. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the day you give us, for the time that we have to come and worship you today. And we're thankful for Travis and for his lesson. We're thankful for all those who have assembled today. And we pray, Father, that we may learn more about your word, Lord, learn more about you, and draw closer to you because of our study and worship. Go with us now as we look into your word, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Right, it's kind of difficult to jump in the middle of a, what somebody's doing and have a, uh, have a class on what they're doing, so I never really tried to do that. I always try to do something a little bit different, and it's always difficult to come up with a subject and what people would like to talk about, but I looked at my notes on here and two years ago next month I put a few lessons together just generally about the church and I thought that we had I could just use those on days like today when uh, when we had to uh, have a sub for one reason or another and I've gone through some of them and uh, the name of the lesson or what I had tried to do was just simply put a few uh, uh, words together, uh, lessons together that dealt with the names that God's people are called in the Bible. And I know it's been two years <laughs> since we did some of these, and I know that you know them, but I also know that you probably don't remember which ones we've covered and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go back and just mention uh, as a review some of those names that we call ourselves in the church. What is probably the number one thing that we name that we call ourselves? Christians, yeah. We call ourselves Christians, don't we? All right. Why do we call ourselves Christians? We're Christ-like. That's what Christians mean, isn't it? Christ-like. And uh, let's see, are those things still up there? Yeah. Um, our trivia prize for the crappie beds. <laughs> if anybody can tell me, number one, how many times the word Christian is used in the Bible and where they're located to get the crappie beds. <laughs> so if you want crappie beds, all right. Who knows? Start with the first. How many times is the word Christian used in the Bible? No, nah, you got no. Nah. Three times. Three times. Three buckets, yeah. <laughs> Three buckets. <laughs> uh, one no. All right. Do you have any idea what the situation was? What was said generally? Christians at Antioch. Okay, that's in Acts eleven twenty six. And we had when he had found them, he brought them to Antioch. Saw it with the church and taught a great many people, and his disciples were first called Christians and in the term Christians. All right? Okay. All right. That's also in Acts. Acts 26, verse 28. And then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuade me to become a understanding there that they were commonly calling themselves Christians, they were known as Christians. And that Paul had almost persuaded the king to, there's one more. Those are the two that everybody seems to know. There's one more. Or, you got it. Okay. You want to read it? You want me to read it? 
He looked it up on his. That's no fair. Ready? <laughs> There you go. That's exactly right. Okay. I'll just read it so everybody can hear it. Freddie, Freddie looked it up for us. It's 1 Peter 4.16. Do what? However, if you suffer as a child, you have access to the All right. If you suffer as a Christian. All right. If you suffer as a Christian. So those are the three places that the word Christian is used in the New Testament. And um, one, they were first called Christians in Antioch. And then two, Paul told Agrippa that he said, uh, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. And then three, if you suffer as a Christian. Now, did those people shortly after the writing of this, did they suffer as Christians? All right, you know, we made these statements some before but all right if you suffer as a Christian all right if you suffer as a Christian so those are the three places that the word Christian is used in the New Testament and um, one they were first called Christians in Antioch and then two Paul told Agrippa that he said, uh, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. And then three, if you suffer as a Christian. Now, did those people shortly after the writing of this, did they suffer as Christians? All right, you know, we made these statements some before, but we tend to forget about the idea in our lifetime, I guess, that that people have been persecuted because... and. Uh, you know, we, we never know. We have tended to forget about that, but it's, uh, and that people and other uh, people are beginning to suffer. And it could be that uh, might come back here. So we need to uh, suffer as a Christian because we are Christian. Collective word that we use to ourselves as a collective. All right, heard somebody say it. All right. All right, called out of what? <coughs> called out of the world. Also has a second, I'm no, I don't know anything about, like I can't do a very good job of that sometimes. So it means called out or an assembly. The word church in various ways. So when we say we go to church, what are we saying? We're going to church uh, Christians, so wherever part of the church is located, right? So, you know, I heard uh, the thought about going to church. We're going together, together as a church is where we are. You know, it's, we are part of the church. I used to tell the guys at school that, that uh, when I taught, tell them when you put on that jacket and wear that jacket, Wherever you go, you represent your organization then. And that's true today, and it will always be true. You can tell who a person is, especially if they're wearing something that was automatically now, who do we represent? Christ. We represent Christ. We are like Him. We put Him on, and we represent Him now, obviously there's different situations in our life when we come together and assemble together to worship as Christians that we're worshiping God. Certainly we have, we're working and we're thinking about what we're doing and how we're making a living and, and that's perfectly all right too. But do we shed the idea of being a Christian while we're doing it? No, we're still Christians there, aren't we? Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Dan says he's uh, 
more than going to church. And I have too something. I've, I have, uh, uh, that's in, encountered my minds over the, <laughs> my mind over the years some is to, uh, what are we really doing here? Well, we're coming together, we're assembling together to worship, aren't we? And it, that in what is commonly uh, used in the world today of going to church because uh, that term is used so much differently in the world today. But it can mean assembly. It, it does mean that we can assemble together. Uh, but we are called out. We're called out of this world. God's people wherever we are. Here our thoughts are on. It doesn't mean that we shed those Christian attributes and attitudes and things, we still have those, although our mind may be concentrated on something different. All right, the word church is used a couple used other than, uh, I've, we've, we've named a couple, but I don't know how to get this off in the other direction. It's used as an assembly or as a group. It be used two different ways. Um, if we talk about the church at Benton, what are we talking about? Or the church at, okay, congregation. Congregation at a specific place. Um, in Acts eleven twenty two, it talks about the church at Jerusalem. All right, we talk about that being a church in a local area by a certain group of Christians, but then the church can also be used in another connotation. How's that? Universal. Okay, universally. The church, universal. Are we a member of the same church that the folks in Benin? All right. We're a member of the same church, the same group of people, the same group of people who have been who are baptized believers. We are a member of that universal church and they have a local congregation or many local congregations in Benin and we have many local congregations in the United States. Some of the problems that we have when talking with people and trying to maybe even have Bible studies is our difference in the way that the world understands the word church and the way we believe it's taught in the Bible. Because if you're talking to a friend and they use the word church, what do they usually think of? A building somewhere that they go to. Often they think about the people. Right. Which one do you belong to? Denomination. Uh, so it's sometimes almost imperative that when you talk with people like this that you, you have to understand how they're using the term. Uh, they're not going to understand how you're using it until you explain it to them from Scripture. But the common use of church today just simply means some building somewhere that somebody is, uh, uh, has a group of people that, that gather together. Okay. All right, any comments or questions about that? All right, another way that we designate ourselves or the Bible designates Christians is the body of Christ. All right, what do we mean by the body of Christ? Comparison. What comparison is being made, really? Many, many cases in the Bible. In fact, almost, <laughs> almost all, uh, when we start dealing with uh, terms that deal with the church, are comparison, comparisons of one thing to the body of Christian believers or the group of Christian believers. So the body, we are the body of Christ. We are the group whose head is whom? Christ. He is the head of the body. 
So the body of Christ, we are likened to the body of Christ in that he is the head and what are, what are we doing then? We are comparable to what? All right, the various parts of the body that does the work of the body, right? I mean, you know, our hands and our feet, our eyes and our ears and our nose all have different functions. And so you can compare that to the body of Christ. Um, the head is what makes your decisions and controls the functions of the body and everything. So Christ is the head, but then the rest of us are out here doing what, supposedly? Doing the work of the Lord. And through various functions of the body. Okay. So we need to keep inviting people for our gospel meeting. That certainly is one thing that we can do. All right. Uh, this is always um, a question that is, is talked about when you're talking about the church. Uh, how many bodies are there? One body. You see how easy that becomes if you say how many churches are there? Then you begin to think, oh my, well, there's, you know, you start thinking about people here and there and somebody. But how many bodies does a head have? It has one, doesn't it? So the body of Christ are those people who have Christ as their head and is, uh, and they are functioning as the body of Christ in doing the work of Christ. Okay, questions, comments? Sure, that would be one, that would be one uh, name that would be biblical, would be Church of God, Church of Christ, Christian Church, those things. Uh, those are biblical names then what you teach in there, in that assembly, determines whether it is a biblical congregation or not. You know, there are more than one biblical name. But anyway, it's what you teach then determines really who you are. You don't want to be called by name other than who you belong to, right? I mean, you know, it just makes sense that if we're Christians, we ought to be called, or if we're after, like Christ, we should be called Christians, right? I mean, that's, we are the bride. Right, the bride takes the name of the husband. We're the bride of Christ. All of these things work together. So, uh, you know, we just need to understand, uh, you know, uh, I've heard people make uh, comments about some in the denominational world, you know, they claim to be Christians, but then they don't wear the name of Christ. Uh, the organization that they, or their name that they choose for their organization really has nothing to do with, with Jesus Christ. So they've named themselves something else. But anyway, those are, those are studies within themselves. I'm just trying to go back and, and talk about some of the, the ways that uh, the Bible talks about the church, our Christians, or his people. All right, how about the household of God? You ever heard that term? I know you have. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20 says, Now therefore you are no, more lo no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. What does it mean to be the household of God? 
think about that a little bit. That's an interesting concept. It's not earth shattering, but it's interesting. When uh, it was the jailer was baptized, he said he and all his household. And every once in a while, they'd talk about a person's household. What are they? What's the What's the meaning of that? Family. A family group, those who live in your house. That could be a, in, in those times, it could have been more than one generation. It could have been cousins. You know, we don't know exactly how many were living. Uh, we have, we tend to have single family dwellings in our country, but uh, and at those times there may have been multiple generations living in one household, but if, the, if you live in someone's household, then what's your relationship? You are family. You are close. Um, if the church is the household of God, then where is God dwelling? He's dwelling in his house, isn't he? Now, if God is dwelling in his house and we are the household of God, then where are we? In the presence of God. And that's what we need to understand, that we are in the presence of God. Are we in the presence of God when we come here to worship? Certainly we are. Are we in the presence of God when we're at work during the week? We are. Because we are of the household of God. God is the head of the house and we are his family and we are of the household of God so in that verse it says that uh, we are no longer strangers and foreigners what would it mean to be a stranger or a foreigner someone who lived outside the household of God right but once we come in, then we become a part of God's house. Now that means we become a, a part of the church, a part of the body of Christ. All of these terms refer to the same thing. We are of the household of God. Okay. That's right. He's our head, just like the body, the head, you know. There's so many things that can be uh, learned or determined about the church by the use of the term family. Why do we, why do we call each other brothers and sisters? Our, uh, and Dan, I, I think you probably could hear, but Dan saying that uh, Jesus pointed out that these are my mother and my brother, that's crucifixion. And, uh, but yet that was physical, but today, spiritual brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, we're relatives of, relatives of Christ. We're children of God. You know, we tend to lose sight of some of these terms and what they mean. But a child of God, it means that he's your father, your spiritual father. So we are children of God. Uh, we live in the same house with God. 
uh, I don't, we've kind of gotten out of this period of time, but most of you in here will remember it. But uh, the teacher was very commonly called brother so-and-so. How many of you go back far enough to remember the time that people in church called each other Brother Freddie and Sister Jean? You remember that? All right, there you go. Um, that was... Yeah, 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 you'll still hear it a little. But we've gotten away from it a lot. But yet there was something really about that that really was pretty good. Because when you call each other brothers and sisters, what does that, what does that mean? Respect for, one another. Respect for one another. We are God's children, so that makes us what? Brothers and sisters in Christ. And that was a very common term used uh, at one time. And uh, so, you know, maybe we get away from some of those things, but uh, I guess the one that the preacher being called brother was held, up, held on longer than most of them. All right. Yeah. Sure. Right. Uh, <laughs> a lot younger. Absolutely. I surely do. And uh, I remember it, it, these things just shown, showed the closeness of people maybe at that time. But uh, I can go back in, in uh, the recesses of my memory and remember when close neighbors called each other cousins, cousin so-and-so. You remember that? All right. Cecil shaking his head back there. I can remember when they called each other cousins, when they were unrelated, but yet close neighbors. They would refer to cousin so and so. My mom called me like because somebody complained to me. So I get older than I was, I still remember what she said. Right. And we used to teach that. We really did. And, uh, you know, we try to, I, I think people, good people still try to uh, teach their children respect. We do it in a little different way. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and things of that nature. Uh, Sonny? Call what? Errors, yes. Okay. And who is an heir? Right. We're adopted. We are adopted children. That's exactly how the Bible puts it. We are adopted children of God. Therefore, we are heirs of God. Now, to be a joint heir with Christ... Now think about that. You know, that'll almost send a chill down your spine to realize that you are an heir with Christ. So these names can be so important in understanding what, what the Bible is saying and it, it tells us so much about our relationship with God and who we are as Christian people, and so let's don't uh, let's don't take our names for granted. Our names are our names are important, and it tells us a lot about us. Um, any other comments about habitation or the dwelling place of God? If we are in God's habitation, we are in God's dwelling place, right? Uh, and that's the, uh, I guess, the next one. But the household of God is basically the same thing. Uh, where God dwells is his habitation. Um, 
Ephesians 2.22 says, In whom ye are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So that's a dwelling, a dwelling place. Uh, we abide with God constantly. We are living in the household of God, the habitation of God. All right, uh, here's one. We'll take just, well, it's, what time you got? Three minutes. Well, I tell you, I'm not going to get into the other the next one then. The next one, actually, uh, for those of you who are in my Wednesday night class in here, we're going to study the next one, which is the tabernacle. Wednesday night, I'm, uh, pictures, uh, of course, got to be drawings, but uh, pictures of what the tabernacle looked like to the church. And so if you're here for that, so there's no use us really getting into that this morning. So I will save that for Wednesday night. Thank you so much. Sonny, you got a comment, question? All right, Joyce. I tell them where I go. Better Church of Christ. Yeah, you know, be proud of who you are and where you are. It's the way it ought to be. Now, if they want to know more about the distinctions of it, and what we teach, and where we, you know, it's what we are. That's how. It is. It's just like the church in Jerusalem. Those people who gathered together in assembly in Jerusalem were in the church at Jerusalem. We are in the church at Bethany. Be proud of it. Sonny? Next question I'm going to ask. Uh, in order to help to help us to distinguish the church from the non-church body, I think we need to talk to them about the first meaning of the word church in this case the church of Christ. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, church, uh, Sonny's saying church of Christ, the little C in the first, in the word church should be left lowercase. That's been debated for many, many years. Uh, you wouldn't capitalize body of Christ, though, would you? You wouldn't capitalize the body. Uh, you wouldn't capitalize household of God. So those, and it's the same thing. Okay. All right, thank you so much, but I don't, and again, I don't hold it against people who do, okay? <laughs>